this beautiful Sunday night, we are coming to you live from our Nile Serena studios. This is Perspective with Josephine Karunji. And tonight we'll be talking about sexual harassment in high institutions of learning and workplaces. Let me quickly introduce my guests for tonight. And I'll start from right across, Dr. Yuzobia M. Mujshabine, who is the acting director of the Gender Mainstreaming Directorate at Macquarie University. A very warm welcome, Dr. Yuzobia. Thank you and good evening. Right. And uh, right next to Dr. Izovia is Mr. Ochen Joseph, who is a former Guild president at Chambogo University, pursuing a Bachelor of Arts with Education, Ambassador for Uganda National Students Association, Foreign Affairs Minister for Guild Presidents Association of Uganda. Welcome, Joseph. Oh, thank you very much, Josephine. Good evening, viewers. And finally, right next to me is uh, Mr. Moses Musingo, who is a Principal Education Officer, Policy and Regulations of Private Schools and Institutions with the Ministry of Education and Sports. A very warm welcome. Thank you, Josephine, and good evening, viewers. All right. Well, let's say it as it is. <coughs> Welcome back. Thank you for joining us once again this evening. Well, like I mentioned earlier, we'll be talking about sexual harassment in high institutions of learning and workplaces. So earlier in the week, we spoke to some university students about what forms of sexual harassment they knew about or had encountered, and this is what they had to say. Let's have a clip that we recorded earlier this week playing. The issue of sex for Max is really so, so much. It happens in a situation whereby maybe a student like has filled a paper and you know more so when you're a lady and you're going to a male lecturer and you try to approach, maybe try to explain your situation. In such a case, there's a very high risk for sexual harassment to happen. Not only that, it may also happen in case whereby the lecturer maybe has gotten a desire in that very, that very person. So that lecturer can use that issues of exam. So Max can deny, like make the person to fail in order for that person to go and approach him one to one and that you may get that opportunity to discuss about the things. Of course, now it will be conditional, like conditional um, having sex so that you can get the marks. Most of my friends who have ever told me or who have ever experienced it, that they give you a retake. So if they give you a retake, you know, also resitting for a paper when you know you've really worked for it, it's pain. So there are those girls or loose girls, they give in. For me, you know the scenarios where the students are married with lecturers. Mm. You get? Even after studies, they go and become wives. Mm. of the lecturers. How do they begin, do you see? But sometimes <coughs> even this one comes whereby even girls are disappointed. The course is too hard. He's trying a lecturer. A lecturer is becoming hard also. Mm. Now says, I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him. Others are befriended. Somewhere there. They do their own things. Then that later time when the, the love is now going away. Uh, uh-huh. Mm. Uncontrollable. Now they say, okay, I must plan for this lecture so that he loses the job. Touch it now. Are you getting? So there's a lot of things to be done in a society. A lot of things can be done in a society. Mm. But what am I saying? That much as everything is possible in a society, wherever you can find a bewitch at the village, it is also possible that you can find a bad lecturer. But out of 100, you can get one. But not all are like that. Mm. And that one can be dead to his. But it can't say that the whole people are rotten, you know. Mm. Neither all the students are rotten, but there are some girls who can even sell their bodies. Now such a girl who is at the university and selling their bodies. Sexual harassment in Makere is caused by mainly two things. Those who want to get familiar to the lecturers and also people who want free marks. That's what I think. I blame, I blame the students and also the lecturers because if, if I was a lecturer and they approached me, maybe if you want to get so close to me, I would make sure there's a distance or there's a limit. That's what I would make sure I do. 
then maybe also the students, why, why do you want to get free marks? Come to campus, study, do your tests, do your exams, and you're going to pass. By the time the lecturer notices you in class, maybe either you come late or you over move out, out of class, so you also want to be seen. But if you came to class very early, you settled, even if you get below average, maybe you'd go back, you'd go back for remarking, but you can't, you can't go directly to the lecturer. You'd write to the dean, and they would help you out. Like, probably you've gone to visit someone in a hostel, and probably you've gone to drop notes or discuss, and at the end of the day, the person has preyed on you out of nowhere. But you may not even know that you are being harassed, you did just because. In the first place you weren't thinking that you would even do it, but then you end up doing it. That is being harassed, because it's not by your consent that you are going to do it. Personally, I'm a Christian, and I really, on the Christian perspective, it's really wrong. It's not something good because people normally do the things. Some of them are married. I just wanted them. I wish they could respect themselves and they do what is right. It would really be good because they are the one in most cases who start up the things. I don't really blame the students themselves, but the biggest problem normally comes from the men. So if they could understand and respect themselves, it would really be a good idea. Okay, what I've heard, you do your papers very well. Maybe this guy has been chasing on you has got to know about your name, has got to know about all your names, and when he's marking, he maybe hides away the marks, and then your marks go missing. So, of course, anyone who would love studying would go to query for their marks, and what happens, the guy is like, meet me in my office, and that's what he tells you, that I want sex. Well, those were some of the students that we spoke to earlier this week, and most of them were from Macquarie University. When you were listening to them, what were you thinking? Do you agree with what they were saying? Are these familiar things, or is there more to it than we know? Mm, basically, uh, after listening to them, there are some that uh, basically I, I agree with, because I've been seeing it. And then when I'm in the office, you hear of such stories. You hear lecturers has hidden my paper, I've not received my paper, but what is uh, really perturbing is that in most cases, these people don't want to come out clearly. He will just say, lecturer X, lecture, which course unit will not even want to tell you. So, yeah, this thing is familiar. So it's what like is the point of them coming to your office if they're not going to tell you mm. uh, details that will help you help them? Sometimes what they do, they might not come to you direct. But they tell a friend, maybe a person who is close to you, and the person will come and tell you, no, there is a student, or oh, they, they can tell one of your ministers. Then say, uh, this, is, this and this is what is going on. So the minister will come and tell you. But they have also told the minister, don't mention out. I'm okay. really scared. Okay. Yeah. For me, really, from all the views that have been expressed, there is like a, general, a very good summary of what's going on. That the problem is malpronged, it comes from all angles, the lecturers are responsible, the, the students are responsible. But for me, what really touched me were what I would consider some of the excuses that came from the lecturer, because that's not excusable. There is no way a lecturer can say, well, some of the students will come to you, because, you know, as a, a teacher, the lecturer is a teacher, you hold a very privileged position with the learners. That relationship must be respected. Whether they, the students come to you or not, there is no excuse that a, a lecturer can say, I, I fell for it because the student came to me. That is not, cannot be tolerated. Because he said the student will target and say, I want to make this man lose his job. Uh, and that's why you're a professional, that's why you're trained, and that's why you hold that privileged, privileged position of a teacher. That, that position is very privileged, but it comes with resp responsibility. Okay. It should not be exploited. All right. Yeah. And, and I think it's, it's, I should remind uh, uh, yeah. viewers that uh, Moses Musingo is, um, worked before as a lecturer at mass communication department yes, at UCU obviously. and also was a high school teacher mm -hmm. at St. Mary's College, Kisubi and Mount St. Mary's in Namagunga. So yes, you, you yes. know what you're talking about, about this relationship. Oh yes, and, 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 and our code as teachers makes that very clear. Of all the parameters which we are rated, the most sensitive is your relationship with the learner, okay. which should never be exploited. And we cannot have excuses around that. For a mature person having that private position with young people, it should not be tolerated. All right. Yeah. Dr. Isovia. Yes, I, I listened to the students. And uh, first of all, when I listened to them, the question is, what is sexual harassment? 
many of them actually you can you can tell mm -hmm. that they don't understand the meaning of sexual harassment sexual harassment is unwanted sexual advances and i underline the word unwanted in other words if it is wanted if it is consensual between adults mm -hmm. be it <coughs> students be it uh, staff to st uh, uh, between staff and staff then doesn't amount to sexual harassment mm -hmm. but there is a catch mm -hmm. he has already talked about the teacher now what is consent can there be genuine consent between a student and a lecturer that is debatable because what may appear to be consent may be actually coercion if a student is missing their marks for whatever reason by the way, those marks can miss out of a genuine human error. But they can also miss because somebody is trying to take advantage of the student. Uh, the key issue we need to understand when we are talking about sexual harassment is that it is pr primarily about abuse of power. Yes. That lecturer who is taking advantage of a student is basically abusing his power his privileged position. Uh, the lecturer there talked about uh, the students who wants to trap him. But he's a lecturer. <laughs> he has a duty of care. Even if the student was to tempt him, which actually happens, mm -hmm. the lecturer has a duty to even counsel that student because he has a duty of care as a teacher. It is upon himself. Then when he talks about the, the students wanting to trap him, um, in the university and other places, we cannot say um, consensual relationship between mature people can never be outlawed. But if you are a lecturer, a professor, a senior administrator, you really have to weigh as a professional, what are the pros and cons of having a sexual relationship with your student First of all, uh, he talked about people um, wanting to, uh, okay, having a relationship and then later on turn he around. said some of them are married, actually. Yes, mm. but you see, uh, the professional code of conduct will require that even if you fall in love with your student, you cannot, uh, uh, the professionally, you mm. are required even to declare your, your, your conflict of interest. Yeah. But you cannot have a situation where you say relationships between uh, adults are outlawed. But you have to weigh as a professional what is in it for me. What does that mean to the student who I'm supposed to take care of? So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding around sexual harassment. But the bottom line is it is unwanted. It's about abuse of power. And the key defining factor is the effect it has on the victim more than the intention of the harasser. Okay. In other words, if somebody makes it very clear that the advances you are making are not welcome, uh, unwanted. then withdraw. Okay. Yeah. Why is this conversation important to you? Well, it's important. It's what the most important. It's important because Education is really what matters for these young people, what they're doing is they're making a future. And if we keep silent, <coughs> they are going to be misled. But also, it's the conversation is important because it's coming from our general culture of silence. You know, when the things are happening, it's not because schools or high institutions of learning are particularly bad, but actually they are coming from the communities. So when that happens, and yet we say, Education, or, uh, education institutions should be the safer spaces. When you say coming from the communities, yeah. what do you mean? I mean, sexual harassment, sexual abuse are issues of culture, are issues of the community. They are not issues of education institutions. The, because schools, universities are part of the community, what happens in the community finds itself in the universities. Okay. And because universities specifically, but schools in general, should be the ones leading the community, the liberating them, the understanding of issues. The conversation is important at this level, beginning with the higher institution, because they are the, 
they are the, they are the people who are supposed to come up with the knowledge, to come up with the um, trailblazing aspects of breaking the culture, the taboos, or not speaking on some of the things. And if we do not begin the conversation with these young people at this level, then where will it begin? It has to begin at this level. All right. Yeah. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Professional barber, hairdressing at Lugogo Mall, Garden City, Forest Mall, Oasis Mall, and Acacia Mall. Sparkle Saloon, professional, affordable, and quality services. Every woman and girl has the right to live a life free of violence and discrimination. Leave no one behind. End violence against women and girls. Welcome back. We're coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center in Nile Room. And tonight we're talking about sexual harassment in high institutions of learning and in the workplace. When we talk about sexual harassment in the workplace, for example, how do we define that? What is it? Give, if you can give me an, an example that people in workplaces can relate to and say that's happened to me and I didn't know it was sexual harassment. It's a... Uh, Stills is the same, unwanted sexual advances, request for sexual favor, many times in exchange for something, uh, but mainly ar again around abuse of power, maybe for the boss and the subordinate. It can also be between equals, but that is less common, but it's mainly about um, the bosses harassing their subordinates in many instances, especially uh, those who are in lower uh, economic, uh, so in lower positions of power and responsibility. So it's always about a higher power that yes, is? Yes, it's always mm. primarily about abuse of power. Okay. And power has different forms. And I want yeah. uh, really, the last point that Dr. Zender done, power has different forms. Yeah. And that's why it get, gets very complicated. Yeah. Because sometimes a person you think does not have power. Actually, she or she has that power. Sometimes that power comes from uh, a, a, a knowledge of a, a secret or an understanding of okay. what you did in the past, and that can be exploited for sexual harassment. It can be even from a person who is junior, but has a hold over the person above because of some knowledge, some understanding, some something that they can offer that the other one would look to. So it is a little bit more complicated than just superior. Okay, superiority. Okay. Mm, basically me, I look at it at something like is quid pro quo. Mm. Uh, so, uh, some, some condition something. attached to. You find that uh, sometimes a, a junior person might need a promotion, but the condition that might be attached to you in the middle there is that you offer me this, I give you this. That is just to make this thing very clear, especially to we the youths that are going out to job market. Some of these things okay. really indeed exist uh, where someone puts for you a condition that for us to put in the list, this is what we want. Okay. And that is it. Mm. Right. And that's only uh, one form actually mm. where you exchange for, uh, exchange for something. But there is a situation where the environment can be made so toxic Yes. that you find it very difficult to work in. Mm. For instance, you can find situations where you come to office and maybe because somebody wants to make advances on you, they are sending you uh, sexually expressed materials, the text messages, uh, emails and all that. And then they are making verbal comments. So it becomes very difficult for you to operate in that environment. But the key issue is that it become, it, uh, behavior amounts to sexual harassment. When it becomes conditional, it's a condition for you to attain something. But it also, uh, when it's m the environment becomes very difficult for you to operate, it becomes uh, uh, problematic. So and it has a devastating impact on you psychologically, health-wise, and all how that. How do you deal with it then? How do you arrest it? At that point where, for example, the, the example he gave where somebody knows a secret about you and they're using it, you know, against you, or if mm -hmm. your boss is sending you uh, explicit messages or pictures or something, but how do you handle that, that situation? Normally what is uh, important is for any organization to have a policy because it's a very complex problem and you don't deal with it like any other disciplinary 
uh, process because it tends to happen in private and if you don't have a mechanism for unearthing it first of all it becomes very difficult but even when you have a policy you have to have mechanisms of implementing it and people have to see that you are actually implementing it because when they don't have the confidence that you are implementing it they will not come out to report it Okay. So uh, there are many um, mechanism of mechanisms. Do you but think that naming and shaming works? Yes, it does, mm -hmm. but it, you, you have to be careful because it has to come out after a due process. A due process that yeah. is mm -hmm. where normally even the challenge comes from. Mm, basically, yeah. like what I can also interject in is that uh, uh, apart from just having the policies, sometimes also companies in most cases they have a gap, a gap of orientation. Once in a while sitting down with the bosses, our managers and so on, and talk to them not only about work, but other related issues that is really inhuman, that the company does not expect to drag its name to. So you find that we are going to promote you to be a manager, but things like sexual harassment wouldn't entertain it in our company. Just as the uh, let's say the executives of the company, just sitting down, even if without a policy, mm -hmm. but orienting yourselves that certain things we wouldn't want to entertain in our company. Joseph, you, you're a former guild. I'm a former president. guild. President. So I'm, I'm wondering about um, would you perhaps sit down with your students, with the students at the university, mm. the freshers, the, um, and you know, take them through it and say, if a lecturer does this, or if, you know, would you take them through that? Would you orient them as you say? In fact, uh, I did it uh, when I was still in the office. The time when I was orienting the, 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 the year one students who are currently coming, going to second year, I talked to them about that and I well elucidated about it. I told them, should we hear issues related to this and this and this, related to sexual harassment, please come direct to my office. You don't even need any person in the middle. Okay. So, uh, and I also tried very much to relate with the people, especially the ladies, being a lower level so that we can be able to try to get their attention if they are talking about this. But sometimes there's that fear. You, they, they will not bring it and out. You really cannot blame them. Mm. Okay. For, for me, really, that, that, that is where the problem is, and mm. that's where we should begin. Mm. Point of empowering the young people, empowering the people <laughs> to know, first of all, to recognize it, but also to be assertive enough to mm. stand their ground when these issues come up. For me, that's where the solution is. You can have your laws, you can have your policies, but if the people who are affected do not even recognize that sexual harassment, and they, are not, they have not been trained from down primary level up to this level, mm. if they have not been trained and empowered to be assertive, to call it by name and to reject it, the policies we put in place will not work. Will not mm. work. Yeah. Where do you think it stems from? You see, you have to have a multi-pronged mm. approach. Mm. Uh, even when you have a policy, you have to create awareness. Yeah. And awareness is not just for the victims or potential victims. It is also for the potential harassers and potential uh, uh, people who can fall prey into that problem. Then when you create awareness for people to understand, because as you can see from the script that we watched at first, yes. both the students and the staff mm. have misconceptions about yeah. sexual harassment. Mm. Some of them think it is to be blamed on the victims, which is not necessarily the case. So you have to have a multifaceted approach. There will be a role for uh, the, the awareness creation. For instance, in the university we have programs working with the students, working with the counseling center, working with the senior staff, working with the administration. So everybody has to be involved in terms of awareness creation. He, he oh. talked about induction. Yes. Yes, you induct, when you get new students, when you get, uh, for example, we put that policy into the freshers orientation. When we are meeting them, we talk about it. But of course you have to keep at it. It's one thing for you to talk about it in one session, but it's another. The lived experience mm. might be different. Yes, if so if you really have to have multiple approaches to solving the problem. If someone has come with uh, something from their background, you can't take it out within a day. But Absolutely. where do you think it all comes from, this problem of sexual harassment? Mm. I, I, th I think we talked about earlier on, we mentioned the community. Um, and 
and, and this is really not just Uganda. I was reading something on BBC and they were talking about Zambia, Zimbabwe, where 12 year olds uh, demonstrate their manhood by forcing a, a young girl into sex or something like that. So the, the communities around us, the, communi the, the, the issue of the unbalanced gender power is where it begins from. Mm. So and, 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 that's, and that's where I said that the beginning. Um, Last that we need to that's where we need to address our concern as much as possible. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I also have something to say. Uh, by nature, first of all, we are all individuals. We are human beings. Uh, there is what we call heterosexuality, whereby we have uh, sexual admiration between people of opposite sex. Uh, one thing is this: this thing does not only exist on the side of the lecturers. It also sometimes can exist on the side of um, uh, the ladies I mean, or the, the, the students. I mean, even the president could, could be harassing <laughs> the <laughs> students. You know? sure. So it's not only the lecturers. <laughs> 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 okay. yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, actually, anyway, that thing can also exist. But uh, of course, I thank God that it never happened at the time when I was yes. in the office. Mm -hmm. So uh, this thing here. There is, it starts with the admiration. Sometimes the first sight, you've come to lecture, you see a lady very beautiful, and you're like, eh, is this an <laughs> angel who has come here? So that heterosexuality feeling, that, that uh, force of attraction that you'll see. Then sometimes also the female students, the lecturer might be looking very handsome. The gentleman enters, is well organized, you're like, eh, have you seen him? Then at the end of it all, <laughs> so you find that there is a case where the students also harass the lecturers. Uh, uh, okay. Are you that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I think we I think we need to be very careful here. Mm. We have to differentiate between attraction <coughs> and sexual harassment. Mm. Those yeah. are two different things. We actually, uh, uh, at being attracted to the opposite sex, it's a normal, normal thing. Mm. Actually, we would be worried if people were not <laughs> relating normally. Mm. But that is different from sexual harassment. That is the unwanted. And that can happen even between students and students. Yes. And so also. we really have to be extremely careful because being attracted to the person is okay. But then what you do with that attraction, with attraction. that's where you have to command, to, to govern yourself, your emotions. It's not like every emotion that we give, we get, we have to act on it in a certain way. What we you do human. that is unwanted. Sorry? What you do that is unwanted. Yes, what, what is unwanted, it means that okay. if somebody is, if it is clear to you that this is not a relationship that is wanted, disengage. Does not mean anything. Okay. May That's I just correct question. one thing? Be before we, you correct it, I'm going to ask us to take a short break and then we can start with that okay. when we return. Let's okay. take a break. It's brought to you by Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Welcome back. We're coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center now room and we're talking about sexual harassment in high institutions of learning and in workplaces. You wanted to say something before I cut you off, Moses? Yes, I was saying when my colleagues were talking about uh, heterosexual attraction, uh, I was talking about yeah. it and they say this thing is more than just attraction between and harassment between male and female because there is an increasing, I increasing instances of sexual harassment that's happening within the sexes, male on male and female on, on female. And I want our young people to see that, to understand that it's happening in our communities, also happening in our schools, and that's what as a ministry now we are focusing on. Give me an example. Examples are young boys going to S1 and they're finding those um, bigger boys in the schools uh, who have been exposed to magazines, foreign media, and things like that, and they begin to introduce them, the, using that power of being a senior in the school, introduce them certain funny, funny th sexual things in the magazines and so on. Some of them end up traumatized. Some of them end up abused. Some of them, so those are the things I'm talking about. And Happening in single sex schools as we're well. We're seeing more of this in schools now? Yes, we've been have, we have had some cases reported and we also know that we've had groups that have come into the country deliberately trying to promote them. And that's what we are trying to counter with some of our policies, 
some of our programs that I'll be mentioning as we go ahead. What is the ministry doing? You could just tell us. The, what is the ministry doing? One of the things I've done so far that we, we, the audience should be aware and the people across the country should be aware is the development of the National Framework for Sexuality Education. We want to empower our young people from the grassroots, from the lower levels up to the university to know all these forms that we're mm -hmm. talking about that there is sexual harassment, but also personality growth, so that you can stand your ground and find, uh, fight sexual harassment. So we're taking but sexual harassment, I mean, mm -hmm. sex education to schools? Yes, sec not sex education, okay. sexuality education, which is most, the, the, the about 80% of that sexual education is about character growth and relationships. It's not about sex, sex as we understand it, sexuality education. It's about relationship, attitude growth, self-esteem, understanding your, your body, understanding your quality, understanding in the community as a person and asserting your position. Okay. But also a quick one, Joseph, in as a ministry, also empowering schools. We have encouraged schools to have a counseling and guidance um, institution. Every school should have a senior woman teacher and a senior man teacher to help the young people do that. But also in the ministry we have a unit called Gender Unit. It has also gone ahead to produce what we call uh, reporting, tracking, referral, and um, referral and, um, <coughs> and response guideline on how this, because we know if they can be reported, then that's a, a step forward. If they can be tracked, that's a step forward. Mm -hmm. If they can be referred beyond the school, we are doing something. And if there is a response, then we shall be doing a lot of work to help the young people. I, I hope that. it's not just in the urban schools. It's a bit not in the urban in schools. The we actually, our emphasis has been in the rural. We've okay. been a lot in Karamoja area and in other places where we know that um, the cultures are being strong on her sexual harassment. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take some questions from the, mm. or, or thoughts from the audience. Uh, yes. Well, the guidance and counseling centers in higher institutions of learning still have a long way to go to create awareness and sensitization among the students because most of these things happen and they continue to happen because students are silent about that and some don't know that the guidance and counseling centers exist. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, you didn't even say your name, but you don't want us to know you. It's all right, let's, <laughs> let's hear from your neighbor. Thank you so much. My name is Navasa Kelvin Patel. I want us to take an opportunity to look at the other side of the sexual harassment, which is the one between students themselves. You see, students interact more to each other than uh, the <coughs> lecturers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we shall look at this, at this form. For example, these, they are offensive jokes. The other day, this is a personal experience. I was passing in the compound and the student is telling, a guy is telling a babe uh, that I want you to give me on. <laughs> I, I, I want you to look at, at, at these offensive jokes. And uh, this will create a psychological torture, which is unwelcome, and this brings out the sexual harassment. I'll talk, to, I'll talk about briefly about what uh, the doctor... Wait, our, our time is quickly spent. So what you're saying is mm. between students? Mm. Yes. Okay, so while someone, one of you responds to, to that? Yeah, yes. I'll talk about that one. I thank you very much for mentioning that. Uh, indeed, this one exists even more than the one <laughs> of the lecturers. And... Uh, but you didn't point it out earlier. Uh, like earlier on, actually, I had not thought of it because we started the journey with the looking at the hierarchy. Mm. But however, now at our levels, this thing indeed exists. But in most cases, we take it for a joke. We don't think, we, uh, the students don't see how sensitive it is. Well, what to are the you doing as a student's to. body going uh, forward? At the student's body, basically, we have uh, the ministries uh, that represent the guild president. That's the Ministry of Gender <laughs> Ethics. We have the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs and uh, the Minister, uh, Minister of uh, Religion or Religious Affairs. Uh, their responsibility is to go down, talk to the students about the psychological beat, the psychological torture that they get. Well, what is that thing that makes you uncomfortable in the university? And you find that a bigger percentage sometimes is related to that. What happens so, when it's beyond you? Uh, when it is beyond me, of course, we basically go to the Dean of, Ofi uh, the dean of Students' Office, then deans, uh, Dean of Students' Uh, has a team of counsel and, uh, counseling and guiding uh, group who are supposed to meet students. Okay. But the, the part that is so disappointing is that majority of the students don't know that, okay. unless it reaches me. All right. mm. Dr. Isobia, what do you say about this between the students' sexual harassment? Yeah, it, it happens a lot, mm -hmm. and we are aware. And actually, the students also themselves, they, uh, for example, there is a phenomenon they call benching. 
<laughs> that is uh, that is the typical example I can give about sexual harassment. You see, it's not uh, sexual harassment is non-consensual. Mm -hmm. So whether it is between students, whether it's between students and their their lecturers, it is sexual harassment. So it needs to be addressed wherever it is. Mm -hmm. That's why for us as the university, we have a policy that we have had since 2006. We have challenges in terms of implementing it, but we have been implementing it with mixed uh, degrees of success. But the key thing is to sensitize the students, that they don't have to put up with benching, for example. What, so what do I do if I'm being benched? You make it clear that that's not welcome. How? If they're not hearing me in the no, first place? No, there are structures. Because even when you are in a hostel or in a hall of residence, there is a, there is a, a, a structure that you can seek help from, okay. from the dean of students at that very level. Mm -hmm. But okay. for us as a directorate, we have a responsibility to implement two main policies, the policy and regulations against sexual harassment, but also the broader policy on gender equality policy. Because okay. sexual harassment is, uh, happens within a bre the broader framework of gender-based violence, violence against women within that framework. So the university has those two main policies and there are different organs in terms of its implementation. We have the guidance and counseling center, we have the directorate of legal affairs, we have the office of the dean of students, and then the whole university administration. So we work in conjunction with those. And where the sexual harassment happens, uh, whichever unit it is, that's where the implementation now comes in. But okay. sexual harassment is sexual harassment, irrespective of where it is. Mm -hmm. Even the students themselves, they have that uh, the, the structural power. What makes the, the male students, for example, think they can be bench uh, woman, uh, uh, female <laughs> students one day, two days, three days, a whole week? Mm -hmm. Like now, that's a, it's a common problem, especially when mm -hmm. freshers have reported. So sexual harassment is sexual harassment. It doesn't matter where it is. It is about abuse of power, and we must fight it at where, uh, with its ramifications. OK. Very yeah. quickly, your question. Thank you very much. I'm called Pius, doing software engineering at McCary. So for me, what I'm trying to think, I think we, have, we are just waiting for the problem to happen. Then we take solutions. But for me, what I'm trying to think, we go back and sensitize these people from the grassroots. Because okay. instead of waiting to address the situation when it has already happened from the universities, we go back to primary, secondary, mm -hmm. so that when these people come here, they are already aware they already know. of, of right. the issue. Thank, thank you, you very much, yeah. Pius. I'll ask you to quickly make your closing remarks as you respond y to Pius. Yes, thank you, Pius. And uh, really, that's what I've been talking about. For us as a ministry, we know the, 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 a lot of things are coming from lack of knowledge, lack of self-character, lack of development of assertiveness. If young people are assertive, they know their rights. If they know what is sexual harassment, a lot of things will go away. As a ministry, we are emphasizing that, but we're also not leaving the teacher alone because the teacher is very critical in the, all this, um, the, the, this business. The teacher is the father and the mother of the child at the school level. Now, we have been having a gap, Josephine, at university, I, with I all due respect to... Because I have about a, a minute. Yeah, as, so as we conclude, yes. that we, what we are doing at university level is that we, we've done now, is an offering a, teach, a national teacher policy that will demand that whether you're at university or at primary, you adhere to certain code of conduct. And that gap has been there at university, that you just come from, because you have a first class degree, you go and teach without the ethics of a teacher. Okay. So, we shall so you're trying to, to make sure that even that the ethics of are not accompanying you. Com because that's education for us. Education is holistic. It's not mm -hmm. just engineering. All right. It's well, moral <laughs> growth as well. <laughs> thank you all very much yeah. for taking the time to speak with us. Unfortunately, our time is fast spent, so we'll say uh, that's it from us for tonight. Coming up is NTV Weekend Edition. Keep it NTV.